Okay, hi there. Uh, you're here for information about setting up a paper using the ninth edition of the MLA format. Um, this is, to be honest, some pretty dry stuff. It's not the most exciting workshop you're ever going to attend, but this is pretty key information if you are writing a paper in a humanities class such as English um, or any other subject in the humanities, uh, your professors are gonna expect you to format a paper using MLA. And of course there are a variety of other different formats, um, APA, um, Chicago style, um, but MLA is used in the humanities. So you can see the agenda on the right-hand side. There are several things I wanna cover uh, over the course of this presentation. I know that's a long list, but I don't think it's gonna take very long. I wanna share some resources with you. Um, a couple of good things that are, are good to, to, to have uh, in your toolkit. And then um, we'll talk, uh, we'll do a QA. and a uh, If you have any Qs, I'll have the A's. <laughs> so um, if you come up with any questions that don't get answered along the way, uh, if you have questions as we go, by all means, uh, pop up, raise your hand. Uh, I might not see the chat, so just go ahead and, and interrupt me. Um, but if you have questions at the end, um, I can answer some there too. So let's get into it. Um, let me get rid of this slide here. And we can look at a blank document, which I've got here. Um, and I will share this with you. Actually, you can just follow it on the screen with me. Um, the first uh, thing that we want to talk about is margins. Um, Margins for an MLA formatted paper should be one inch all the way around. That's top and bottom. I'm using Google Doc, by the way. I'm using a Google Doc for this presentation. The same rules apply for Microsoft Word or any other word processing program that you might be using. Um, I'm using Google Docs because in my experience, that is what most of my students tend to use. Um, and I think it's, it's pretty easy. These things translate pretty well from program, from one program to the next. So, one of the things that I find frustrating is that it is often hard to find this, like margins, for instance, where are the, where is the margins button? Um, in a Google doc, you're gonna find it under page setup. And hopefully your Google docs also defaults to one inch top and bottom, left and right. Um, that's super handy. And believe me, it didn't used to be this way. Back a million years ago when I was a student, and I used Microsoft Word because there was no such thing as Google Docs. Um, the left and the right margins did not default to one inch. And so MLA was asking us to do something that was hard right off the bat, which was change the margins. But um, your margins should be one inch. If you're using Google Docs, you're good to go. We want one inch top and bottom. Squeezing the margins in top and bottom reduces the area on which text will appear on your paper. And um, teachers, professors are really good at spotting uh, margins that are generous. So if you set your margins to an inch and a half or two inches so that you can say, look, I wrote a four page paper just like you asked me to. Um, teachers are pretty good about spotting that. So one inch all the way around. Well, how do you how do you exactly um, get it to do that one inch? Like, what do you click on? You click on. So there's page setup here under file in Google Docs. Right. And that's what pulls up this. So obviously you want a uh, portrait size, you want eight and a half by 11, but one, 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 that's what we're looking for. Uh, so- hey, Thank you. Yeah, sure, margins, easy, right? Uh, let's talk about page one information. So when you're setting up a paper, there are four pieces of information that you need to have in the upper left-hand corner. Can anybody tell me what those pieces of information are for non-existent extra credit? <laughs> Name, date, mm -hmm. um, subject. You wanna have, yeah, those are, those are three of the things. Uh, you want your name, you want the professor's name. This is gonna be Professor Professorson, best name ever. The third piece of information you want to have is the class that you're taking. So we're going to say this is English 1A. And then the fourth piece of information is the due date of the assignment. So it's not today's date because today is not the due date, right? The due date of the assignment, let's say it's uh, 30th of September. MLA uses this 
I think, British style of rendering the date, which is the day of the month followed by the month followed by the year. Um, we would write it like this um, in, in America, typically. Um, I have never given a student an F on a paper because they have used the American style of date rendering versus uh, this fancier style. So, you know, if you do it this way or you have done it this way, it doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to get dinged for it. But if you want to be absolutely correct, you're going to use uh, this style. So these four pieces of information go on page one. Um, they don't go on every page, just the top of the first page. Notice that I'm not starting way down here. Uh, I'm not hitting space in between all of them. Uh, we're going to take care of spacing in a moment. We're just going to start at the very, very top. And it occurs to me, actually, that there's one thing that isn't on my agenda today, and that is the font. Um, we need to select the correct font. Uh, notice that I didn't change anything on this Google Doc, and it has defaulted to Arial 11. So, pop quiz, is Arial 11 what I want to be using for an MLA paper? It's New no. Times Roman, right? Oh, right, yeah, it's, it's not correct. We want Times New Roman. So, it's the wrong font, and it's the wrong size. So, that is easy enough to fix. Times New Roman 12 is what we want for an MLA formatted paper. Why? You know, you, there's a lot of rules uh, that guide this. There are a lot of answers to the why question. But to be honest, the best answer to the why question is because. Um, English teachers, when they get a set of papers, we want to see them all looking exactly the same. There's a lot of rule following here. There's not a lot of uh, wiggle room for personality or adjustments to sort of make it your own, right? These papers should all look the same, have the same look to them. So we have these four pieces of information in the upper right, and we have our font corrected, and we have our margins set. Um, the next so question, piece, sorry, yeah. before we move on. No, um, go ahead. The date you said it's, it's supposed to be on the, when you turn it in, right? Mm -hmm. Or the day you make it. Uh, repeat that question for me. Sorry, there's some noise behind me. It's all good. Is it the day that you made the essay, or is it the day you turn it in that you put on? for the date on that. On the Great paper. question. It is the day that you turned it in. Uh, so if uh, September 30th is the, is the due date for the assignment, that's the date you're going to put here. Today, this is going down on video. So today is September 14, 2021. Uh, so notice that's not the day I'm going to put here, right? If I got assigned this paper today and being a diligent student, I'm getting started writing it on the same day. I'm not going to put today's date. I'm going to put the 30th because that's the due date. Okay. Cool. Uh, the next thing is the title. We need a title for this paper. Title goes on the very next line. I'm not going to do a title page in MLA unless I'm specifically asked for it. I'm not going to go way down here and go title. Yay, something cool. Right? No. We're going to go the very next line. So right after the date, I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to center my title. So I'm going to find the center align button in my word processing program, and I'm going to type my title. And the title of my paper is going to be, let's say, um, how to make a ham and cheese sandwich. This is going to be the most boring paper ever written. <laughs> um, the title of it is how to make a ham and cheese sandwich. Right. This is it. This is all I have to do. I'm capitalizing all of the major words and I'm not capitalizing the non significant words or the insignificant words to and a and and those are not key words. So I'm not going to capitalize those. capitalize those. I'm going to capitalize all the other ones. Notice that I'm not going to make this bold. I'm not going to make it underlined. I'm not going to make it a huge size. I'm not going to set it off in any way that makes it look different, right? The font is exactly the same. 12 times New Roman, plain text, that's it. Okay, so we have our title. Once we have our title, we can start writing our paper. We're gonna go back to the left. We're gonna hit tab because we're gonna start a paragraph and we're gonna start writing our paper. Here's my first sentence. It's going to be, there are many different wonderful things a person can eat for lunch but a ham and cheese sandwich is perhaps the best 
obviously I'm not going to go on with this paper, you get the right idea. But again, um, look at the spacing, right? Notice that I'm not setting it apart. I'm not hitting return a bunch of times. I'm going line by line by line by line. Uh, and that's the way we wanna set this up. We're gonna change the spacing for the whole document in a second, but I think it's easier to see all of this information at once on one screen and then change it rather than, um, rather than make a bunch of changes um, at the start or rather than set a, or, or do crazy things with the spacing from the beginning. Uh, a lot of people um, joining us all of a sudden, I'm hearing the ding that tells me that a lot of people are joining in, welcome. Um, if you're just getting here, that's great. Um, I'm going through the process of showing you how to set up a paper in MLA 9th edition. Um, if you haven't already signed in using the link in the chat, please do we try to get an accurate headcount on these workshops. And also, if you're looking to make sure that your instructor knows you are here, um, this is a good way to do that. So um, let us know that in the uh, sign in sheet also. So quick question for then, Dan, yeah. so you just put tab for the first pair for to start your first paragraph. Right, right. Some people, uh, some students think it's a number of spaces, it's five spaces or it's 10 spaces or something like that. We're not gonna do that. Um, if you start at the flush with the margin, then you hit tab, that takes you, as you can see, I don't know if you can see up here in this little ruler thing, but it takes you half an inch in. That's what we're looking for is this half inch right here. And hitting the tab key is how you get that half inch. Thank you. Yeah. As I said at the start of this workshop, I know that it's very um, detail oriented and very dry stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, I think one of the benefits of, of getting this right the first time, besides, you know, impressing your professor, is um, you can kind of use this as a template going forward, right? You don't have to recreate the wheel every time, right? When Johnny Student writes his next paper, which will hopefully be on a topic more interesting than this one, uh, he can kind of go back to this one and create a new document based on this one. And as a result, he'll have all of this, all of this kind of legwork taken care of for him. Uh, the next thing is spacing. So let's talk about that for a moment. Um, we're just going line by line by line. That's correct. But what we want to do now is I'm going to highlight all of it. And I'm going to go to format. And whoops, and I'm going to hit line and paragraph spacing. So different word processing programs have different uh, default settings. The default setting for Google Docs for some reason is 1.15. Notice that's where the check mark is. That means we have 1.15, you know, whatever, between each line of text. But as you probably know, we want a double space text in a uh, MLA formatted paper. So I'm gonna hit double. And that's gonna space all this out a little bit more, right? This is double space. It's not one and a half. It's not 1.15, which is a weird number to default to. It's double. That's what we want. There are other options here in spacing. Um, sometimes add space before a paragraph or add space after a paragraph is checked. I've noticed that in Microsoft Word, uh, it typically defaults to having some space after each paragraph. Um, but we don't want that. We want just double space, plain old double space uh, from start to finish throughout. No extra bells and whistles, no extra spacing, right? In other words, the amount of space between these two lines is the same as the amount of space between these two lines is the same as the amount of space between these two lines, right? All of them, double space throughout. Clear? And then the last thing that we need to do for the first page is we need to put in a header. So headers can be a little bit tricky. Um, we need two bits of information in a header. And first of all, we need to find how to put a header in, right? You would think that it would be here under insert and you'd be correct. We want to insert a header and you can do all of this keyboard shortcuts, but I want to show you how to do it sort of the hard way first. For a header for MLA, we need two bits of information. We need the student's last name and we need the page number. We want both of these things to be right aligned. So we're gonna hit this right aligned button. We want that over on this side of the sheet. Notice that what Google Docs has helpfully done for me is defaulted back to the font that I don't want. So I need to change it again. So we're gonna set this to Times New Roman 12 also. The student's last name, you can't see it because it's covered here, but remember this is, paper is being written by Johnny Student. 
So the student's last name is student. A lot of students think that what they need to do is then put a one here on the first page because we're on the first page. That makes a lot of sense, right? Once we clear out of it and then we go on to the next page though, look what happens. Page two reads student one, right? And if I go on to another page of my text, guess what? They're all student one, right? We don't want that. So typing one was the wrong thing to do. So let's go back to header. We're gonna take that number away, okay? And we're gonna clear out of this. Now we just have the last name. Look what's also under insert, page numbers, right? Where do we want our page number? We want it in the upper right. We want it to be next to student. So we're gonna click that option here. Perfect, right? That's how we want it, <laughs> except no, it's not. We wanna take the last name and put it before the page number. So Microsoft Word and Google Docs do this thing where they show you, see how the one is in a little bit of shading? That's showing you that it's going to change from page to page, right? Before we didn't have that shaded uh, aspect to that digit. Now we have that. So when we go on to page two, look, it's a two. When we go on to page three, look, it's a three. That's exactly what we want. This now is exactly what you want on your works cited page. I'm sorry, on your MLA formatted first page. Um, the last thing we're gonna do is look at works cited in just a minute, but I wanna see if there are any questions. People are putting their names in the chat. Um, that is- I, I have a question. There. Uh, just one second. Um, put your, I would ask you to sign in on this sign in sheet. Uh, I just need to grab the link so that I can drop it. Actually, I'm having trouble doing that. Can someone else uh, grab the link to the sign in sheet and drop it in the chat for me? And then uh, Claudia, hi, Claudia, Emma, Jose, and Emily, um, please make sure that you sign the sign in sheet. Um, Okay, so uh, someone said they had a question. Go for it. Yes, so if I sign in, my teacher or my professor, sorry, my professor will know if um, if I attend it. Uh, if you uh, leave a note in the in the bottom of the uh, of the uh, sign in sheet, um, just put the, your professor's name, and I'll make sure that they get information that you were here. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I have a question though. Um, yeah, shoot. So back to the header. So how do you said there's a two ways, the automatic one where you just click on the options right there or the hard way, the difficult way? Uh, the difficult way, I just meant that there is a, there are keystrokes you can use, control alt O, control alt H uh, to get oh. that same thing, right? That's all I was talking about. But I wanted to show you all where it was in the, in the actual uh, menu up here. So it's just, um, so it's just headers and then some, your last name and then you have to, uh, Click on page number also. Right, see headers and footers and page numbers are different in Google Docs, but we want the page number in the header. So okay. that's what makes us a little bit tricky. The header, we're just gonna put in our name and then the page number, we're gonna choose to have it up here in the upper right. Okay, for sure. Right? And then once it's all together, change the font so that it matches the rest of it. For sure. Uh, the last thing on this uh, slide is, that there is a works cited page. So the last page of your paper is going to be the works cited. So let's say we're gonna write a really short one page paper on how to make a ham and cheese sandwich, right? So our works cited sheet is gonna be page two. So at the top of page two, we want works cited, right? Again, it's not underlined, it's not bold. It's not a bigger font, it's not fancy. It is straight, boring, regular old text, same as everything else. So we're gonna put works cited up here in the center and then we're gonna write a line. And now here's where we list our sources. Right, now, obviously I'm not gonna go through a whole list of sources with you, but they're gonna be listed here according to how they're supposed to be uh, listed. Um, generally speaking, uh, the things on a works cited sheet are listed alphabetically. So since the first piece of information you typically get from a source is the author's name, um, that generally means you're going to list things alphabetically by the, the author's last name. Uh, if there's no author's last name, and let's say 
the, uh, you're citing a an article called Ham and Cheese, the best sandwich, <laughs> right? Oops, I will say, here I was, right? There's no author for this, then we're gonna file it under H for ham. Um, the next portion of this um, presentation is I wanna show you a couple of resources that will show you how to get those works cited um, citations correct, but before we do that, um, any questions before we move on? Anything about this initial setup that I can answer? Well, I have one for, for the work cited one. Uh huh. So that goes all the, all the way at the end, right? All the way at the end, last page. We're excited. Okay. So yep. this is like for like any book, any quote, even a quote. If you're referencing another source, then it's got to go on that work cited page. Okay. So you could be quoting it, you could be referencing it, you could be paraphrasing it. Um, if it's information that you had to go get by looking up um, in an article or in a book or in you know anywhere else, you watched it in a video, you listened to it on a podcast, uh, any of those things, anything that didn't sort of originate in your own head has to be put on a work cited page. If you're not sure, um, then my advice to students is always do is to be better safe than sorry, right? Uh, put it on there if you're not sure. Your teacher can always say, hey, this doesn't need to be here. And you'll go, okay, great, lesson learned. Um, but if you are not sure and you don't put it on there, then your teacher might get upset and say, hey, you got this information from somewhere else and you didn't give them credit. That's plagiarizing, that's bad, right? So if you wanna be on the safe side, err on the side of, the, the side of caution, Put it on the work side of cheat just to be safe. And I know that that's a little bit extra work too, right? Finding those citations can be a pain. Um, a lot of students, you know, rely on something like EasyBib, for instance, as a way to get those citations. Um, right, the, the the website comes up with a citation, you cut and paste it into the work cited page, and you feel like you're good to go. My experience tells me, after reading, you know, a million student papers in my life that EasyBib tends to get things right about 70% of the time. Um, so my advice would be if you're going to use a, a citation generator such as EasyBib, I know there are others, um, that you double check it against the correct citation just to be sure. There are things that appear in citations that are generated by, by citation generators that are clearly wrong. And if the student had looked at it for three seconds, <laughs> right? They would have seen that there's an obvious mistake here, but sometimes they don't, they just cut and paste and move on. So as one of my colleagues says, um, it's called easy bib, not lazy bib. <laughs> so, right, it can't do 100% of the work for you. It does about 70%, but still double check it to make sure. All right, all right, so the work cited, so does it always have to be on a separate page or could it be right under like, if we have some space under the last, the conclusion or whatever? Um, you know what, at this point, oh, I should have pulled this way to the top and I didn't, that's my bad. Should go way at the, at the, at the very top in the first line. Um, the answer to your question, uh, Frank, is that um, in the old days, I would say, let's save some paper and put it at the bottom of your page so you don't print out an extra piece of paper just right. for the work cited. Um, but at this point, all English teachers are accepting papers online or virtually, right? So use as much virtual paper as you want. We're never gonna run out of virtual trees. So since that's the case, um, unless your teacher tells you to do something else, put the works cited page on, or the works cited list on its own page. Thank you. You bet. Um, yeah. Let me show you guys a couple of sources here. Uh, or a couple of resources, I should say. Um, if you're not already familiar with the online writing lab from the University of Purdue, um, University of Purdue was one of the first colleges or universities to put, uh, to have a writing center online. They call it the OWL, the online writing lab. And they have continued to maintain a really useful a uh, bunch of uh, websites here, web pages here. Um, you want to see a sample works cited page? It'll take you to one and it will point out what it's supposed to look like. Um, videos pop up now that I find useful, but it's kind of annoying that they pop up. Shows you how to cite the papers exactly. Um, you want general format information, you can get that here. It's updated to MLA 9, which is brand new. 
ninth edition just came out. It's way less interesting than when a new iPhone comes out, but English teachers get nerdy about it just the same. A lot of general guidelines here. And what I really like about it is that there are visual aids, right? So this is the first page of an MLA paper. You don't have to be able to actually read it. I know it's a little bit blurry, but you can see that it's been created basically the same way that I just created one, right? Um, same pieces of information in the upper left, the same header in the upper right, the same formatting of the title and the text of the actual paper that follows, right? It's exactly the same. So um, this is a great resource to use um, throughout your college career, especially while you're taking um, English classes uh, and humanities classes. So I'm gonna drop this link in the chat for you um, so that you can save it and bookmark it. It's super, super useful. The other thing I wanna show you is um, something we have here at El Camino. We have a, a brand new um, citation style guide, right? This is one of the many lib guides. The library publishes guides for a bunch of stuff. Uh, they're called lib guides for short. This one is specific to citations and you can see that it's got information about the latest edition of MLA. Um, if you're using APA or Chicago, if you're taking a law class, there's specific ways to cite sources in law. Um, I find, obviously, for, for purposes of this, that the um, uh, uh, section of this web page that deals with MLA is super useful. Again, it gives you the basics. How to cite a paper on a works cited page, right? You need these key pieces of information. It gives you some examples, right? How to cite a book, how to cite an article if you get it out of a journal or off a website. Um, and then furthermore, if you go to the library's webpage, you can always chat with a librarian live. So if you have questions about this uh, or anything about researching for sources or, or citing sources, you can talk with a librarian or you can of course visit the writing center too for help on citations. So. Um, I'm going to drop this in the chat for you as well. Um, I keep <laughs> giving you the disclaimer that I realize this is not the most exciting thing, um, but you've got these resources, uh, virtual resources that will show you how to do it. Again, not as easy as something like EasyBib, but way more correct. Um, so I would say don't settle for getting things 70% correct when you can get them 100% correct. And this is how you do that. Um, questions about either of these uh, websites that I'm showing you? And you said you were going to drop this link in the chat box as well? Say that again, Nicole. I'm sorry, you said you were going to drop this link in the uh, chat box as well? Right, yeah, the links for these two uh, websites are in the chat as well. Okay, awesome, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Um, one last um, link in the chat of the uh, sign in sheet for today. If you're looking for extra credit or you want your instructor to know you were here, make sure you leave me a note to that effect on the sign in sheet. And if you already signed in and forgot to give me that information, sign in again and give me that information. Okay. So we have come to the third and final part of this presentation, which is Q and A. Um, I wanted to leave uh, open some time just for you to be able to ask some questions about stuff that you want to know. So I'm going to stop the recording.